All right, today we're going to uh, look more at 9.5 and we're just going to practice more graphing. So, I want you to graph two periods of y equals negative one fourth sine of x over two. Pause the video, unpause it when you're ready to check your work. All right, so hopefully you came up with a curve that looks like this. Again, um, the shape and the labels are the really important thing. Uh, so, if you didn't or if you're confused on how I got that, let's look at my work. Um, Alright, so the vertical shift is zero, horizontal shift is zero, amplitude is positive one-fourth, but the negative will affect the graph. Uh, the period is going to be four pi, two pi over one-half, and the intervals are pi. So again, I know it's going to start at zero, zero, so I center my axis around that. Uh, the y-axis is off to the left because everything's going to go to the right. I draw in one-fourth and negative one-fourth because although it's not to scale, I don't care about that, I want it to look nice. Uh, and then I make my nine tick marks, labeling them by numbers of pi. Uh, put in the points to show the general um, picture for one period of sine. This is going to go down, so it starts on the axis, and then it's going to go down first because it was negative one-fourth. All right, uh, the next one. Graph two periods of y equals negative two cosine of pi x over two. Uh, pause the graph or pause the video and unpause when you're ready to check your work. All right, so here hopefully your graph looks like this. Uh, I know that I have a vertical shift of zero and amplitude of two. The period is two pi over pi halves, which is four, which leads to intervals of one and a horizontal shift of zero. It was a negative in front of the cosine curve, uh, in front of the negative two. So all of the amplitude is positive. It's going to start below the axis now, and then I plot my points for two periods of the cosine function. Alright, uh, another one. Graph two periods of y equals negative 1 plus 3 cosine of 4x minus pi. Uh, pause the video and unpause when you're ready to check your work. Alright, here our graph should look uh, like this. So, um, again, how do we come up with this? Well, I have a vertical shift of negative 1 and an amplitude of 3. A period of pi halves, a horizontal shift of pi fourths, I have my work up here for that, and an interval of pi eighths. So first I drew the x and y axis and I drew, I put the x axis a little bit off center above because I have a vertical shift of negative one. However, because I have an amplitude of three, I know I'm going to go up to positive two and down to negative four from there. Then I had my horizontal shift of pi fourths, so I started at pi fourths and then from there I added pi eighths. So that's how I got three pi eighths, pi has five pi eighths, three pi fourths, seven pi eighths, pi, nine pi eighths, and five pi fourths. It was a positive cosine curve, so it starts up at the amplitude, then it's on the axis, then below, then back on the axis, then up and down, and so on. All right, so next one. Here now I want you to do what we did the other day, and I want you to try to come up with a sine and a cosine function for the following graph. So here's the graph. Pause the video again, and then come up with a sine function and a cosine function that both fit this curve. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. All right, so similar to before, you know, the first thing I recognize is that there's a vertical shift of negative one. So I drew that line in there. From there, it's really easy for me to see that the amplitude is positive two, or well, amplitude remember is always positive, uh, depending on where I want to start. It could I could have a negative a value though. The period is pi. Uh, I recognize that by looking at either um, from here to here is one complete cycle. That's a distance of pi. Or as you can already see, I have them highlighted from here to here. So negative 3 pi fourths to positive pi fourths is a distance of pi. So the period is pi. If the period is pi, I know b has to be 2 because the period comes from 2 pi divided by b. So 2 pi divided by what equals pi? Well, 2 pi divided by 2 equals pi. So therefore, I know b is 2. So for sine, uh, I didn't write out all of the possibilities here, but it's pretty easy to see that, remember, sine has to start on the axis somewhere. So any of these spots, and then the one I chose was 0 because that's the easiest to choose. So if I can pick that, I want to pick that. And also if it starts at zero, it's a positive sine curve. 
So that's how I come up with y equals 2 sine of 2x, parentheses, and then minus 1. I can put the minus 1 in front if I want. That doesn't make a difference. So it could be negative 1 plus 2 sine 2x. There are other correct answers for sine. That's the easiest answer. Cosine is a little more difficult in this case. Not a lot, but a little bit more. So cosine has to start, remember, at one of the peaks or the valleys. So in this case, I chose to have cosine start up here at pi fourths. So I want to say it has a horizontal shift of pi fourths to the right. Now, if I'm writing the equation, the easiest way to do that is to actually factor out the b value. So I haven't shown you this yet, but uh, maybe we've seen this in class. So y equals 2 cosine of 2 times the quantity x minus pi fourths. So the 2 here is my b value, even though it's outside the parentheses. If I distribute the 2, then it becomes 2x minus pi halves. This down here still has a horizontal shift of pi fourths to the right. Remember how I told you to find the horizontal shift if you were given the equation is set what's in the parentheses equal to zero and solve for x and this will give you your horizontal shift. And then we still have the minus one. There are again other correct answers. This is just what I chose to do. If we put a plus here, uh, then we can throw a negative in front of the 2 uh, for the a value, and that would be correct as well. We could also have a horizontal shift of 3 pi fours or negative 3 pi fours. All right, last one. I want you to do the same thing. Uh, find a sine and a cosine curve to represent this curve. Uh, pause the video, unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. All right, so here, hopefully you recognize right away, vertical shift of positive 1. From there, amplitude of 3, and the period is 2. So if the period is 2, that leads me to a b value of pi, because again, 2 pi over what equals 2? Well, 2 pi over pi equals 2. So then, if I want to write this as a sine function, again, I need to pick one of these points that are on the horizontal axis of y equals 1. So I chose right here, which is 3 fourths, or 0.75. So I can say y equals 3 sine of pi times parentheses x minus 3 fourths and then plus 1. So again here, it's easier to write the function from the curve if you take the b value outside of the parentheses. There are, I could also write this as pi x minus 3 pi fourths in parentheses. So I can distribute the pi uh, and it's still the same. It's just easier to write it in this format so that I can see the horizontal shift and I can still see the b value. For cosine I did the same thing. So y equals 3 cosine of pi times the quantity x plus 3 pi fourths plus 1. So plus 3 pi, 3 pi fourths means that I'm shifting 3 pi fourths to the left so I'm starting at this point here. Again there are other correct options um, for the cosine. I could have had x minus 5 pi fourths and I could have started at this point. I could have had x minus 1 fourth and started here and then make this a negative 3. Uh, for sine, I could have shifted to the left 1 fourth as well. So this could have been plus 1 fourth and then make this a negative 3. So there are other correct answers. These are the ones that I chose. That's it for these notes.